Hi everyone, welcome to the BMW M4CS. Uh, so this is a slightly stripped back, track ready version of BMW's flagship or most iconic sports car. The M4 range has expanded quite a bit in the last couple of years. You can get the standard M4, you can get the M4 Competition, uh, and then last year there was the M4 GTS, and now this CS. So this is positioned somewhere in between the Competition and the top GTS. It's not a full track car like the GTS, um, this can actually be driven on the road and be pretty practical. It's got seats in the back, decent sized boot and air conditioning and so on. But there are a few bits and pieces which definitely hint towards its track credentials. So this has lapped the Nürburgring in 7 minutes 38 seconds, uh, while the GTS does 7.28 and a standard M4 I think does about 7.52. So it's nicely in the middle of all those. Aside from the actual track credentials, uh, the CS in my opinion anyway is one of the coolest of the range like it's it's got that street cred about it so you've got a full uh, carbon fiber body kit with an aggressive front lip spoiler uh, the black grills and then this race like uh, heat extraction vent in the bonnet so this isn't to scoop air in for the engine it's actually an extraction vent so as air comes through the front end cools through the radiator it comes up over here and actually provides downforce this is the kind of setup that they use on a lot of gt race cars and moving towards the back, you've got the carbon fiber bonnet, which is actually uh, available on the standard M4 anyway. And then you've got a huge lip spoiler made from carbon fiber as well. And then down below, you've got the aggressive carbon fiber diffuser with M exhausts. It sticks with the M tradition of being pretty subtle. Um, you just sort of have to know uh, what this car is about. Yeah, you've got a few telltale signs to let you know that this is a bit more serious than the regular version. I love the wheels that BMW has chosen, so they're, they're gunmetal grey, but they're not cosmetic, they don't look all that good, they're just regular spokes, um, but they're 19 inches on the front and then 20 inches on the back. We'll just have a look inside, there's some more lightweight features in there too. When you open the door you'll see the door trim is completely different, so this is just full carbon, dry carbon, um, and there's no door handle there. No bottle holders, just a strap to pull it shut. It's still got the normal door handle to open it. This is carried through to the rear as well. And these are the M4 competition seats with the, the slot that goes through to the back. And then the center console is being completely removed. So it's just got a, uh, a trim piece for Alcantara across the top, but no box that lifts up. There is a little USB port down below there too, so you can charge your phone. I'll start it up, see what it sounds like. So it's got a bit of bass to it, but it's also got that traditional six cylinder rasp uh, like the E46 and E36 M3. So these door handles can be a little bit of a pain um, because they're mounted right at the front you don't actually get the leverage they need to be mounted back here but obviously that would be stupid to have this strip hanging down near your elbow um, but yeah you can still use the armrest uh, i do miss the bottle holder in the door there so it does take away some practicality the steering wheel is covered in alcantara or suede or whatever they like to call it these days um, which is very cool it's very nice to hold uh, but I find it does dry your hands out a lot. It's, uh, it's very good at absorbing moisture. So you find after a long drive, your hands are very dry. But yeah, I definitely pick this over the normal leather. It feels awesome to hold. As for room inside, it's uh, a typical four series. So there's not too much difference. Uh, apart from the seats, they're a bit obviously bigger and more buckety uh, compared to the regular four series seats. Um, but it's quite practical. Like it's, there's decent headroom and even room in the back. Uh, for two adults. It's not too bad. The CS does come with single mode uh, climate control, so it's just a dial for your temperature there. Um, I haven't actually seen that on a BMW ever in my life. They've always, they're, they're normally always got uh, dual, dual zone with two different controls, so it's funny to see like an analog, analog setup. Uh, but everything else is normal, so you've got iDrive 6, uh, which is quite, quite good. And you've got your tiles that sort of display horizontally as opposed to the previous BMW system, which was just a list that you had to go through. 
I've always liked the iDrive system. Uh, a lot of manufacturers are adopting this type of setup because you can drive along and you don't necessarily need to look down to change anything. Once you get used to it, you know where all the menus are and so on. And you don't have to reach up and touch the screen, although you can in the latest uh, iDrive 6 system. Anyway, this car's about driving, so let's take it for a spin and see how it goes. So before we go, I'll just quickly explain the drive modes because there's quite a few. Um, you've got Comfort, Sport and Sport Plus for the steering, suspension, uh, engine response and also for the transmission. That means you've got about 36 options, I think, my maths is not very good, 36 options for the, uh, for the main modes and then you've got three for the transmission as well. Um, that sounds confusing but uh, it's actually quite good because, for example, I like the steering in Comfort mode. Um, because it's it's a bit too heavy in sport plus mode for me it just it doesn't change the response or anything like that it just makes it a bit weightier so a bit heavier make it feel like a um, a bit of an old school car without power steering um, and then the suspension I've got it in sport mode because this road is not ideal on a track you'd probably go all right with sport plus but it's, uh, it's quite firm and then the engine response is it's an interesting one because this throttle is so sensitive in Sport Plus, like really sensitive, which is awesome if you're you know trying to shave tenths of a second off a lap time on the track, um, and you just want to make that 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 fine adjustment to uh, to get you around quicker. Um, but on the road, I think Sport mode is actually a bit better. It's not as snappy, um, especially especially for an inexperienced driver. It's going to be a um, it's just a normal sort of sporty throttle, where Sport Plus is very very sensitive. Um, all of this sounds pretty confusing, but BMW M has made these uh, M buttons. So you've got M1 and M2, and they're basically a bit like tuning in your radio. So you get all your settings that you want, and then you preset M1 to do that setting, and then you can have M2 as another setting. So, for example, you could go to work and have M2 set up as a sort of practical setting, and then as soon as you hit a, a, a track or, or a nice mountain road, you hit M1 and it preloads all your systems, uh, all your settings straight away. You don't have to actually fiddle with these. Um, you still can play with these as you're going. It doesn't matter. It's not even if you do pick M1, um, you can go back in and change the steering if you wanted. There's no nothing's locked in. I actually like this. It, it, it sort of broadens the versatility of the car. But anyway, let's go for a drive and see how see how it goes. So that's the transmission in Sport Plus, the steering in Comfort. Oops. And then the suspension in Sport, and the throttle response, oh, we'll leave it in Sport as well. So the gearbox is really quick shifting, um, as you see then, it just, as soon as you select second gear, it just lights up the rear tyres, which is pretty awesome. Um, it's not actually shutting you, like pushing you in the back as it changes gears, it's just all happening underneath. Uh, but it just gives you that gear, gear change very, very quickly. does make it a bit more sort of uncomfortable um, but it's not too bad for a sports car for the amount of performance that you're getting it's uh, it's not too bad at all yeah down changes are very quick just as quick as the up changes almost um, nice little blip of the throttle the steering is quite nice it's not a um, it's not as organic as some of the older BMW steerings systems um, I'm a former E36 M3 owner myself and that had pretty much the best steering I've ever felt um, so it's not quite as good as those setups but compared with the modern day rival so in modern standards these electric power steering systems are just the way they are uh, it's just the way that it is um, it's not too bad awesome performance from the engine it's the uh, s55 3 liter twin turbo straight six in this it produces 338 kilowatts and 600 newton meters which is slightly up on the 331 kilowatts of the competition pack and 550 newton meters 
Um, you can't really feel the difference in power, but you can feel the torque. There's, a, there's that 600 newton meters is a lot of torque, um, and it just yeah helps you get out of the corners much quicker, um, and you've got a bit more sort of low down response as well. There's plenty of grip. So this is running Michelin Pilot Cup 2 tyres. They're almost semi-slick tyres. Um, but there's heaps of grip from the chassis as well. It's got a good stance. Um, I think this CS actually sits a bit higher than a normal M3. From the outside, it looks like it's uh, running a slightly higher uh, suspension setup. Um, but yeah, it's, it's got good suspension range. And yeah, awesome handling. So I've heard a lot of journalists and uh, experts say that this is a bit too twitchy, which yes it can be if you've got it in the Sport Plus mode and you come around a corner with the stability control completely off and just nail the throttle, then you're going to loop it or you're going to, unless you want to do some drifting, you're going to, uh, it's going to kick the tail out, definitely. Um, but I like that. I like that the way that, you, you know, the driver has to be the integral part of the drive experience. If you want it to do that, it'll do it, you know, it's not... It's not about, oh, I've got it under control. The, the car is set up for, for drivers and it just, yeah, it lets you do whatever you want to do. If you want to drift around the corner in third gear, then it will do that. But yeah, if you drive it on a smooth line or a racing line and be gentle with the throttle, only apply as much throttle as you need or as much traction as there is, then this is a very quick car from point to point. Um, around a track, it's yeah, it's it's really nice to drive. Um, I've driven the M3 on the Nurburgring, and it just yeah, I could I could have spent all day there. You know, it's it's just in its in its element on a track, and this would be even more so uh, in its element on a track. It's just it just wants to drive fast. It's it's really awesome. like I just did then, um, it, it won't kick out, the limited slip diff, or I think it's a locking diff, um, hooks up really, really well and, and supports sort of smooth traction driving. But if you be a bit of an idiot with the throttle, it will kick out on you, definitely. Yeah, it loves to drift. But again, yeah, it's all about your right foot. So you're driving not only with the steering wheel, but with your right foot as well. And I think that's what makes it such an interactive and engaging car and, it's, and also rewarding. So when you get it right, you really feel real good, good about it that you did it, you know, it's, it wasn't the car.
C63 or a Lexus RCF. The engine sound isn't immediately, you know, blowing blowing your mind. It, it's just a it's a very it sounds like there's a lot going on under the bonnet, which there there obviously is. Um, because three litres and 338 kilowatts is quite a good effort. But yeah, I love this car. It's uh, I'm, I'm a massive M3, M4 fan. Um, I try not to be biased in my reviews, but it's, it's sort of hard not to because it just does everything that you want it to do. Um, and I love the way that it is a luxury car as well. Um, so you can you know drive it to work and so on, and it's just a BMW. So it's, it fits in with the crowd. And it um, yeah, and it's got all the features that you want. I love the new iDrive 6 infotainment system. It's a, it's a good step up from the previous system. I think at the end of the day though, I would probably pick an M3, just an M3 with the competition pack, um, a bit more practicality with the with the four doors, and uh, maybe in black or something like that, just nice and subtle. But I've definitely got a massive appreciation for this car. Like this is gonna be one of those, those highly collectible cars in the future. You know, it'd be one of those cars that you see on the road and you're like, oh, that's one of those CS cars that they sold. They're only making about two or 3,000 of these, um, very limited supply in Australia. So if you see one in Australia, they are quite a rare sight. But yeah, I like this is definitely the coolest sort of M car currently on the market, in my opinion, with that carbon fibre body kit and sort of the carbon door skins as well, uh, the cool seats and all this Alcantara. It's Yeah, it's definitely got that good street cred appeal. I'll be going over more of the details in the written review on the website soon, um, and we'll do our usual 0 to 100 video. Thanks for watching.